The S400 Triumph is one of the most popular weapon systems today. This popularity causes a lot of comments about it. Even major international crises are occurring because of the S400. In fact, some of these comments reflect the truth, yet others are exaggerated. It is just a weapon system with some advantages and weaknesses like others. As a weapon detective, we're investigating the S400 and what is true and what is exaggerated about it. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new video, please click the bell button. As a highly capable air defense missile system, the S-400 is one of the major systems of Russia's defense strategy based on the Anti-Access Area Denial Doctrine. Its NATO reporting name is SA-21 Growler. Many analysts accept that S-400 as an all-star who, with its superior capabilities, can make its team a champion. However, please remember that without the right teammates, the right coach, and the right tactics, no all-star alone can make a team the champion. Before starting our analysis, let's take a look at the history and capabilities of S-400. The development of S-400, which was called S-300 PMU-3 in the beginning, began in the late 1980s. It was an evolved version of S-300. After the dissolution of the USSR, Russia announced the existence of the project in 1993. The first successful fire test was conducted in 1999. In 2004, the system became ready for serial production. In the same year, the S-400 intercepted a ballistic missile successfully in a test. It became operational in 2007. As a general mistake, many people think that the S-400 is the name of the missile system. However, it is the name of the complete air defense system. A complete S-400 system consists of a 55K-6E command post, a 91 and 6E panoramic radar, and 6 to 8 98ZH-6E independent surface-to-air missile combat system. Each independent surface-to-air missile combat system consists of a 92 and 6E radar system, up to 12 5P-85TE2 and or 5P-85SE2 transport and launchers and the 30TS-6E technical support system. Depending on the tactical situation, many different types of support equipment and radar can be added to the battery. The 91 and 6E S-band panoramic radar detection system has a range of 600 km. It is highly resistant against jamming. The radar can track up to 300 targets simultaneously. The 92 and 6E multifunctional radar of the Independent Surface-to-Air Missile Combat System has a range of 400 km. It can track up to 100 targets simultaneously. There are up to 72 launchers and 384 missiles in a complete S-400 system. The S-400 system can fire five separate classes of missiles which answer different combat requirements. The 40 and 60 is the one with the longest range. Its maximum range is 400 km. The maximum effective altitude of the missile is 30,000 meters. But it is also effective against the targets below the radio horizon at extremely long range. With a speed of Mach 3.5, the 40 and 6E can be used against a target that travels with a speed of Mach 14. The missile has semi-active radar guidance and active radar guidance options. When it is used with the active radar guidance system, the missile climbs to a designated altitude first, then guidance switches to search and destroy mode. S-400 uses the 48 and 6E3 missiles against targets at range of up to 250 km. Its effective altitude is about 60,000 meters. With a speed of Mach 5.9, the missile is effective against the targets with the speed of Mach 14. It has a semi-active radar guidance. The 48 and 6E3 can perform the maneuvers up to 22G. The third missile, 
the 48 and 6E2 has the maximum range of 200 km. Its maximum speed is Mach 5.9. The missile is effective against the targets with the speed of Mach 8.2. The 48 and 6E2 has semi-active radar guidance system. The 9M96 and 9M96E2 have 120 km maximum range and 30,000 meters effective altitude. These active radar guided missiles can reach the speed of Mach 2.9. They are highly effective against unmanned aerial vehicles and cruise type missiles. The 9M96 and 9M96E2 can perform the maneuvers up to 20G at its maximum altitude. So they are highly effective against short and medium range ballistic missiles. The S-400's missile with the shortest range is the 9M96E with 40 km. Its effective altitude is about 20,000 meters. This active radar guided missile also has optical and infrared guided versions. Thanks to their guidance system, these versions can be used against stealth threats. The 9M96E is highly effective against low flying targets. These missiles are launched vertically. A gas system launches the missiles from the launch tubes up to 30 meters into the air. After that, the rocket motor is ignited. With 898ZH-6E independent surface-to-air missile combat system, S-400 can engage 80 targets simultaneously. Belarus, China, India, Russia, Saudi Arabia and Turkey have already preferred the S-400. This information is available in many open sources. Let's move on to the analysis part. First of all, as we mentioned in the beginning, although the S-400 is an all-star, it is not a lone hero but a team player. It cannot alone protect an area with a radius of 400 km with the 40 and 6 e missile. It has to be used together with many other systems such as different types of air defense missile systems, fighter interceptors and early warning aircraft. The 91 and 6E radar cannot operate with full efficiency within its 600 km range. Because the world is not flat, as the range increases, it becomes impossible to detect a target at a low altitude. Besides, within the 600 km area, many obstacles such as mountains directly affect the detection capability. This shortcoming has to be compensated by the forward radars and or the airborne early warning systems. That is why, although it declares that the S-400 is effective at a range of 2 to 400 km, Russia continues to supply new generation book and TOR systems for its air defense units. It also reinforces the 8400 batteries with the Panzer for self-defense. The maximum range data described for a missile is the data of range in an environment where all conditions are optimal. Many factors such as pressure, air density, temperature, wind speed and the altitude of the launcher affect the range. Besides, a missile works its engine intermittently during its flight so that it doesn't spend its propellant continuously. When it has to change its course, it is necessary to run its engine at higher performance than normal flight. The range of the 40 and 6E decreases whenever it redetermines its vector towards its target according to the target's evasive maneuver. In other words, the missile can reach its target at a range of 400 km when it only doesn't maneuver. The effective range of a missile is not the same as the range at which it is most effective. The long-range missiles typically have maximum effectiveness between 40 and 60 km. Afterwards, the effectiveness decreases geometrically. For this reason, the S-400 engages the ballistic missiles within this range. Of course, this doesn't mean that these missiles are completely ineffective beyond 60 km. An aircraft entering an area defended by the S-400 is still in danger. However, it has a better chance of saving itself with evasive maneuvers, decoys and electronic warfare. The Swedish Defense Research Agency also agrees with us. 
It claims that the S-400 can be effective against low-flying targets at a range of only 20 km and its actual effective range is between 150 to 200 km. Also, many analysts state that if an air defense missile launched against a target 400 km away, then the altitude of the target must be roughly 9000 meters or more. If the target flies lower than this altitude, the radar of the S-400 cannot detect it. But please do not forget that the S-400 is an element of an integrated air defense system. The forward radars and or airborne early warning systems can detect and eliminate this type of threat. So, thanks to its network-centric warfare capability, the S-400 can attack it. Even so, in 2015, Russia claimed that a successful test firing of the missile was conducted at an air target at a range of 400 km. Yet, the target drone was probably flying in the most suitable conditions for the test and didn't simulate evasive maneuvers. Nowadays, the S-400 makes a name for itself with the crises it causes in the political arena rather than its technical capability. Because of this system, the USA has cancelled the sales of the F-35 to Turkey. But why Turkey has chosen the S-400 instead of the F-35? According to our analysis, Turkey didn't intend to make such a radical choice actually. It couldn't foresee that the situation would get out of its hands. On November 24, 2015, a Turkish F-16 shut down a Russian Su-24 for border violation. Naturally, this caused a serious crisis between the two countries. While this crisis arose, Turkey was also experiencing serious problems with its Western allies. Also, the Turkish Air Force had been seeking to supply a long-range air defense system with anti-ballistic missile capability for many years. However, all previous tenders had failed. Ankara had planned to kill three birds with one stone by procuring the S-400. First of all, tense relations with Russia would soften. Also, this purchase was a warning to the Western Allies. Ankara was making a bluff to making eyes at Moscow. Finally, the Air Force's needs would be met with a highly effective system. But all plans fell through. Although relations between Turkey and Russia softened, it still hasn't improved as desired. Yet, by the sales, Moscow gained money and has managed to drive a bigger wedge between Ankara and its Western allies. At the end of 2020, the USA imposed sanctions on the Republic of Turkey's Presidency of Defense Industries under Section 231 of the Countering America's Adversaries through Sanctions Act. This institution is Turkey's highest authority responsible for purchases and sales of defense equipment. So, because of this sanction, Turkey cannot buy any military hardware or software from USA. Also, it cannot sell them to this country. Thanks to the offset agreements made, many Turkish companies work as subcontractors of the leading US companies. It means the Turkish companies will lose a significant amount of money. Yet, these sanctions also have a backdoor. If Ankara would give the selling and buying responsibility of defense systems to another institution, it can avoid these sanctions. As we mentioned earlier, the S-400 is just one of the elements of an integrated air defense umbrella. Without having the other elements, Turkey cannot use it efficiently. Also, the S-400 is not compliant with NATO standards. Therefore, operating the S-400 with other Turkish aircraft, radar, and air defense systems will cause some severe complications. Turkey had chosen the Chinese FD-2000 for the same requirement before. However, it was seen that applying the software and hardware updates to make the system compatible with the other elements of the Turkish armed forces were not feasible because of its high cost. So, Turkey cancelled the project. The S-400 also has the same problem. Of course, there are many more arguments on this topic. However, we'll leave the discussion here to avoid extending our video any further. Let's discuss our arguments and other arguments we haven't mentioned in the comment section. The S-400 is a successful air defense system on paper. 
However, it is not a combat-proven system yet. Western countries are trying to learn more about it. But Russia is careful about hiding its true capabilities and is selling only the downgraded variants of the S-400. We can say that the system will continue to attract much more attention. And no doubt, we will see more exaggerated good and bad comments about the S-400 in the future. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new videos, please click the bell button.